If you have a tumble dryer that is working and the, t the drum is turning, the display is on, but it just doesn't get hot, the chances are that you've got this part inside the tumble dryer has failed. There are a couple of pounds each or a couple of dollars and it's a thermostat and it's located somewhere in the hot air channel. In this case we're looking at an AEG dryer uh, but um, a lot of the hot points and all the rest are the same and this is a common cause of problems when something inside your unit is not heating, in this case the hot air. It's a condenser tumble dryer and it's all nice, it's lovely, it's on its way to the tip and we intercepted it. So just a quick look at this component because I will show you where to find this in the back of the AEG in particular. But you can use this video equally applicable to most tumble dryers that aren't providing any heat. Okay? There are other causes but this is a, a main cause and you're going to have to check this before you start taking the controller out and looking at things like the heater relay. So this is the thermostat. I will take this apart at the end of the video if you want to see what's inside and why it's failed. I'll peel it all open and you can have a look at it. But at the moment you can see that most of these have got the actual temperature on the outside of the uh, uh, thermostat. It's a thermostat stroke safety. The heating element gets too hot. This opens, prevents the thing catching fire or burning out or scorching, burning, melting wires and so on. So it regulates the temperature at the end of this plate, which this plate is um, this is mounted onto a mylar uh, sheet on the back of the heating element on the AEG and there's a hole in the AEG sheet which exposes this metal section here to the, the heat from the, the, the tumble dryer. So as long as the air is rushing past, i.e. the filters aren't blocked and the condenser isn't blocked, you, you have a airflow prevents it from overheating but this one if I just um, put the meter together you should be able to hear that beep if I uh, touch on here look there's no continuity there should be continuity it's open circuit so when it's cold it's not passing any current into the heater but have a look at yours they're fairly standard size and shape and form just look at on the side to get the temperature and then usually 10 amp and this one's on 140 degrees Celsius, so if it goes above 140, this will open. When the temperature drops, it will close again and re-enable the heater, okay? So that's a little bit lighter. We'll take them apart at the end. Now on to the main video. You can actually see the machine that we're working on and the switch that we fitted and how to find the heater and so on and so on. It's a very simple video. It just really guides you in the right direction. We're not going panel by panel. It's fairly intuitive how to get the thing apart. And on most tumble dryers, the actual heating element is at the back under a metal cover, so accessibility is usually very good. Oh, I should mention one thing about mounting this. This is held onto quite a few of the heater bodies, or just as I said, just mylar, which is a flat mineral, heat proof, almost like cardboard, but it's a bit stronger than cardboard, but not that strong. And this is pop riveted onto the mylar, so to get that off, we had to drill out the rivets. You could fit screws and washers from underneath, but you have to make sure that the screws go in from underneath because you don't want a length of screw protruding through too far and potentially touching the windings on the heating element. And it would be quite fiddly to get the screw in from underneath. So if you have got a pop rivet gun, then pop riveting is probably the easiest way to do it actually, just to simply replace it like for like. Um, but that's up to you. I'm, I'm assuming you've got the wherewithal enough knowledge to actually change this part. But anyway, a couple of quid instead of 80 odd pounds for the heating element. Onto the main video. I will dissect this at the end and then you can have a look inside and see why it's failed. Yeah, we've got another one of these AEG uh, tumble dryers from the internet for 21 UK pounds. Very nice, very nice, very nice dryer. Uh, but there's, this one has got no heat to the heating element. It turns, it works, seems to be doing its thing, but it never gets hot. Now, there is another video on the channel which is uh, dealing with the problems that are the solder joints on this board, and that often causes an error on the front display. But in this instance, we were getting no errors on the front display, but we did check the controller, and although it had a couple of cracked relay joints on it, we don't think that was the problem. So we looked further, no heat, don't forget, not heating up. And then took the top off and the side panels. And then down in the back here, you have a cover which has been removed. You can see the heater block there. And we're just going to take it out and see whether anything has failed or not. And we think it's the problem is down there because we have a live proximity pen and we've checked these cables down here and they do seem to be live. It's not as if 
the heat isn't re receiving power, but for some reason it's not producing any heat. So we'll take that off. There's just a couple of screws on the back. We've already removed this rear cover. from the back of the machine to expose the heat element underneath and we'll just take that off and show you the item that's probably gone and uh, so if yours is gone perhaps you can uh, fix it in the same way so there is the heater assembly the actual resistive heating coil you can see the coil inside the coils there and on the front of that which is facing in towards the machine but on the front of it looking at us now is a thermal switch now your thermal switch may not look identical to this, there's various styles and the correct temperature is a 140, 140 degrees and the object of that switch is if the air flow gets blocked it hasn't got all the heat being carried away by the air because the air's insufficient air flow that will go open and uh, prevent the heater from overheating i.e. A, a safety feature to turn the heater off when it's going ballistic because it can't cool down because the airflow has died now um, that should open and close and cycle so that should open and close when the temperature drops and it comes down to a safe level it should switch back in but unfortunately they go open circuit and that's what's wrong with this one if you want to uh, check it obviously you're gonna have to unplug this thing and follow all the safety requirements make sure you're disconnected from the mains the mains plug is not in the socket but you can remove these two spake connections and uh, then just check the continuity with a with a, a multimeter on ohms to see with make sure that there is current flowing through the switch. The live feed comes in here, and the feed to the heater elements go out goes out there. So if this goes open circuit, it turns the heaters off. Now it's held on with a couple of pop rivets. You can see one down there, and another one on the underside. The whole heater block is going to cost you. What do we think, about 80 pounds? 85 pounds? About 85 pounds, but it's nearly always invariable, just this um, one pound 50 thermal switch. I'll put a link where you can buy one from the descriptions box on the video so you can get hold of one and put it on yourself. Now, if you haven't got a pop rivet gun, you can easily just get a drill and gently drill the top of those rivets and the top shoulder, the top flat part of the rivet will come off. They're only aluminium. And then you can remove the old switch if you can pop rivet the new one back on there, that's the best bet with a couple of pop rivets. If not, you can carefully uh, screw, um, use nuts and screws, get some small nuts and screws and fix the new sensor on. But be careful when you're uh, taking this apart because it is quite a delicate thing. So best pop rivet it if you can. But check your switch is the moral of this story because it's the only, probably one of the only reasons, apart from the solder joints on the controller, that your tumble dryer will not produce any heat. Now I hope you found that useful. If you could just uh, hit the titty button down the bottom of the screen and subscribe, that would help me uh, support the channel and uh, hopefully keep supplying you with useful tips on how to fix your domestic appliances. Okay, let's have a look at this thing. See whether we can uh, find out why it's failed. It's open circuit. We've checked that in the video, so we're going to peel it open like a tin of sardines to reveal the horrors within right so well there's no nice way to do this <laughs> just start work I'm just going to tear it open I no, thank you all this good service obviously a bit of steel. Oh, here we go. Shush. Meter protesting. Use me, use me. Right, so this is the bare bones upper. Let's see what's in there. Why did you fail? Glued on look. There's some sort of high temperature glue, no doubt. It's a shame that uh, you know a really nice tumble drying machine that doesn't seem to have been used much was on its way to the skip because of this little device and it took literally 10 minutes to change it. And we bought the tumble dryer uh, from eBay for £21. 
Uh, okay. You might see some blood at this rate. Okay, so we've got this is the actuation dome. This is a deformed bimetal dome, and you can see that when it heats up, this is the where if I put my hot air blower on, you can have to put up with the noise, there'll be a lot of vibration and shouting going on. Put my hot air soldering gun on, and we'll see if we get this to pop, shall we? But it's just literally a dome. And depending on how deformed the dome is, depending on what temperature it will pop. So if we put it down on there like that, and we heat that to 114, hopefully it will do a trick for us. Is it going to go? My hat again is pushing out 270 at the moment. Maybe the dome's lost its poppiness. So it's not popping back, is it? I think we can get it to go if we just heat it up now. There you go, do you see that? That's what it's supposed to do. And then when it cools down, it's supposed to pop back the other way, but this one isn't. So we've got a spacer. We've got the little plunger, so this piss, this uh, thing acts on this, uh, popping in and out, pushing that pin, and that pin, pin then pokes through that hole, and operates these contacts. Now, on the face on it, on the face of it, you can't really see much wrong with this, can you? I can't. But clearly, it's open circuit, so I'm assuming that it's just literally the contacts are. Let's see if it's still open circuit now. I've disassembled it. So now it's working, look, so when we've removed the dome and the plunger has been released, this part here, the little plunger has been released, you can see that contact brings up and down and there, so there's nothing wrong with the contacts, it was the dome had got tired and hadn't popped back in when it cooled down, which we saw, so there you go, that's your problem. The contacts don't look bad, you can see the contacts in there, they're not charred, burnt or anything else, obviously quite a good quality switch, you can see I'll bring it a little bit closer. You can see in there to the contacts somewhere. In there. They don't look bad, do they? They're not too charged, but, but that's what's what gone wrong is that little that little tiny component has caused the uh, whole tumble dryer to go to the skip almost. We saved it. So yeah. Anyway, so to repeat what I said earlier, if you can do, there's a little titty button in the corner. If you can subscribe to that, it'll help us keep on helping people to uh, keep things from landfill. Hope you found that interesting and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.